Hello, and welcome to this Analyst Angle preview of KubeCon and CloudNativeCon EU, taking place in Paris, March 19th through the 22nd. I'm Rob Streche, Managing Director with the Cube Research. Today, I'm joined by Stu Miniman, Senior Director of Market Insights for Red Hat. And we're going to discuss some of the top trends to look for at this year's KubeCon and CloudNativeCon EU. Welcome, how are you doing? Thanks, Rob. I'm doing great. Looking forward to going to Paris along with you and, uh, you know, what'll be 10, 12,000 of our uh, friends in the community. Always a phenomenal event. And, uh, you know, early spring in Paris probably can't beat that. No, no. And I, I think, in fact, I've been hearing even potentially up towards 15,000 wow. of our closest friends, which will be very interesting. Uh, I, I think, obviously, there's a lot going on in the open source market in general. I think one of the things that's really interesting is that uh, day zero, as we were talking about before, is you know Tuesday, and there's a lot of days, very interesting days. And I, and in fact, I think I, I, when I was talking to some people, I said, don't miss Tuesday this year because Red Hat has their commons going on, but there's also a lot of other different days going on as well. One of the ones that's going on is not surprisingly around AI, and with Kub. Flow or Cube Flow, I think it's Cube Flow, uh, like Cube Con, as I've been pronouncing it wrong for like years now. And also, they have a cloud native AI segment as well. What What are you seeing from the customers you're talking to in the industry of what's going on around AI? Yeah. So, so first of all, Rob, you know you were so right. What used to be called the Day Zero events now called the co-located events. Um, really, for the most part. There's been times where I go through that day and I'm like, look, I've had a productive week already. Um, and that's really good. And I know people that are, you know, local in Europe that are coming just for those events and not doing the main event. Because what I've talked about for many years, KubeCon is kind of a choose your own adventure. You can go deep in a whole lot of areas. And last year, when you, Dave, and I previewed the Amsterdam show, I said, if we don't come out of that show, really with the drumbeat of AI infusing it, um, I'm going to be really shocked and surprised. And it's no surprise that uh, Kubeflow is a project. Uh, AI overall is a workload, um, is happening across a lot of events. And as you mentioned, right in the day zero, uh, Red Hat, we're heavily involved in the, uh, the Kubeflow uh, event that's happened there. Uh, we've got a bunch of other events that I definitely want to talk about, but AI is hot. Uh, I actually did a preview interview uh, with one of the co-chairs of uh, this event, and they were talking about you know the tracks and how many sessions, and AI is a big piece of it um, because you know AI is just part of the overall ecosystem, and it's a big ecosystem when we talk about Cube. Yeah, I mean, if you look at cloud native in general, it really does scream AI. I mean, a lot of the different projects that are out there across the various different landscapes from. Uh, things like Trino and uh, Spark and others in the Apache world. But I think what's interesting is there seems to be a lot more like Kubeflow coming to help with that infrastructure piece and tying Kubernetes back together with it, which I think is great. Yeah. So, I mean, if you look at KubeCon and CloudNativeCon, yes, there's a lot of there's a lot of the infrastructure people here. There definitely are a lot of developers uh, at this show. Um, and from an infrastructure standpoint, the other thing that's been hot for a couple of years is everything around platform engineering. Exactly. So uh, there's both a platform engineering day and a backstage con, and we're involved in both of those. And you take those two and ArgoCon, because GitOps is uh, hot as ever, um, and uh, Kubeflow. And by the way, you mentioned Red Hat Commons, which is where I'll be on Tuesday. I'm actually given uh, part of the morning keynote there. We will have speakers talking about all of those topics and a lot of customers. Uh, we've got Airbus talking. We've got ABB, the robotics company, talking. Uh, SVA is even going to talk about their use of Wasm. So um, you can go really deep on a couple of topics or you can come listen to a lot of practitioners uh, at Commons. By the way, the quick plug for, for Red Hat Commons, it is free to attend. It's a little over a kilometer west of the convention center itself, uh, but it's a nice full day. Not only is there the main uh, stage that we have, we have a couple of breakouts where you can go, go deeper into platform engineering. And of course, there's a reception at the end of the day uh, uh, for, for people to network. Which is always good as well. The network, I think that is also one of the things that's fantastic about this because last year in Amsterdam, when they ask everybody to raise their hand about how many of you, is this your first uh, Kube, KubeCon? 
usually it's 50% of the people have never been there. In fact, I think that to me is always the entertaining piece of it is you get out in the evenings and you're networking. And I like to talk to the people who it is their first time there. And what are they doing? I think last year it was a, uh, it was a gentleman from Switzerland, funny enough, that, that had a company that made the exit signs in all of that. And he was talking about all the IOT that is in all of those exit signs and how they have to build them and how they actually track all of the environmentals around them and all the smoke and all other things that they're triggering and how that was all being moved from being on VMs to being moved to Kubernetes. And they were looking at and evaluating and trying to understand. So I, I think learning from the others who blazed that path before you is a fantastic thing for you to go down. Now you hit on a whole lot of things in in there. Uh, let's let's kind of we'll go to one that you didn't mention, but it's kind of because I think you know uh, you're uh, a different part of your company may be working towards is observability. What we're seeing is that observability is really moving towards a platform play, and there's going to be a ton of observability companies there, probably about the same amount as there were in Amsterdam, uh, but they seem to be consolidating down. And then you have always uh, the fun of open tofu, which is, you know, we'll see if it gains momentum this year. Because really, I I tried to gauge it in Chicago. It had some momentum. Not it didn't seem to take off like Open Search did when Elastic went and changed theirs. Yeah. So, 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 so Rob, right. A, a few things there. Number one, yeah, observability absolutely is, uh, you know, a very important topic. Uh, something we've worked to uh, uh, take many of those projects and put them uh, into OpenShift, as well as we have very deep partnerships uh, with like the Dynatraces of the world uh, who, who are doing a very good job there. Um, I'm going to plead a no comment uh, on, on Open Tofu itself. Uh, Red Hat is not a project that we're directly involved in. I believe our friends over at IBM have had uh, some participation there. Um, but, you know, to your point, community is involved in a lot of different projects there. Uh, since the last uh, event, there's been some interesting, uh, you know, consolidations and moves in the space. Um, I thought like the biggest acquisition was Isovalent uh, by Cisco for, if I, if I remember right, like $650 million. Um, so EPBF, great technology, something that many of us are working to uh, embed that into the platforms that we have. Um, and the other one, you know, it was it was a sad thing that WeaveWorks, um, un unfortunately, is closed shop. So, you yeah. know, two technologies and companies that, you know, we've spent a lot of time looking at uh, in this space. One, you know, had a successful exit and one closed down. Um, the work that WeaveWorks did into Flux and helped the GitOps space uh, was instrumental uh, for, for the growth of this ecosystem uh, and definitely will live on uh, going forward. Yeah, no, I think that that's a, a very interesting uh comment is that with the, you know, I guess you could say the nuclear winter that has been the VC market and some of these organizations trying to figure out their their licensing strategies. Uh, we had Buoyant go on, you know, from a service mesh perspective, go and change their licensing strategy. Um, and I, I think it could have been communicated a little better. I'm not surprised that they went and did it the way they did it, but that's going to impact some things like Kubernetes on the edge, which has got its own part of the day as well on Tuesday. How do you see all of these, especially in that Kubernetes on the edge perspective? Because Red Hat definitely plays there along with a lot of other distributions as well. But yeah. how do you see that playing? Out? So, so, so right, Rob. So we spent many years working on our overall edge solution. Uh, we, we had a project we did MicroShift uh, to be able to shrink smaller than just Kubernetes itself. Um, and there's this great use case that's going to use Edge a lot um, that we already talked about, which is AI. Uh, really, AI is, uh, we, we talked about it reInvent uh, when I had an interview with John. AI is really the killer use case for hybrid um, because inferencing at the edge is something that many, many companies are going to do. You talked about you know retail and putting in signs, financial services or putting things in kiosk, uh, you know, manufacturing, uh, of course, telecommunications. Um, Edge is something that has huge growth and is one of the bigger focuses that we will have at the show itself, definitely. Um, and yeah, the, the, that product line has been uh, doing a lot. Yeah, we, we talk about it and we see it in our ETR data that really inference, as we talk about in our power law of AI, it really is that long tail is where the most deployments will be. 
and inference and edge is a huge piece of that. And I think it's, again, you can't move all the data all the time. And which is uh, a very interesting one because there's the data on Kubernetes, which I'm a part of DOC and DOK, which actually if you're not, uh, they do a great job online and have some uh, a monthly call on it. Fantastic. And I think it's talking about how you keep the data organized and how you have it available. And I think this is not just tackling, hey, what's happening in a main data center, or it's how does it, you know, really bring that back. And I think there's there's, there's going to be an interesting uh, discussion. I think about do you bring the AI to the data or the data to the AI? And I think it's going to be both. And I think to your point, it's a multi hybrid cloud type of scenario. But one other thing that you you kind of hit on, uh, and is is kind of you know, near and dear is kind of the cloud native applications and Wasm. Yeah. I, I think over the last, since Chicago, I, I've seen more, I guess you could say more momentum with Wasm than I had seen before. Are we really getting to, do you see like getting to that, getting over that hump with Wasm? Yeah, it, it, it's funny, Rob, at the Amsterdam show, I was actually really disappointed at how, how much uh, discussion there was at Wasm. Uh, there was a little meetup that I walked by and there was only a handful of people there. Um, it's interesting. Um, our Linux group has is, is been involved in, in doing some things there. Um, we really think there was a lot of discussion, you know, is this evolutionary or revolutionary? Um, it's another great workload that'll work well on, on Kubernetes is, you know, kind of where we see things. Um, and definitely keeping a close eye on it and we will see um, because it's funny, Rob, you know, when I think about like in the last year, um, I've been having to talk a lot about something that I didn't think I'd have to talk about much anymore. Um, and w when, when I talk to customers and they look at their budgets, they're all stealing budgets to work on those new AI initiatives that they're getting from the top. Yeah. And edge is a new opportunity a lot of times to drive new revenue. Um, but you know what I'm teeing up here. There's that concern around what's happening to their virtual machine estate. And those of us that have been at KubeCon for years and years, like I remember when VMware showed up, VMware is a very active participant in the open source community and we welcome them there. Well, the Broadcom acquisition has put this front and center and has been a conversation I feel I've been having every day for the last six months. Um, and what I point out is there's actually going to be a great keynote Thursday morning on the main stage at KubeCon where Goldman Sachs is going to talk about their use of KubeVirt, which is the open source uh, being able to bring uh, virtual machines into Kubernetes and definitely one to talk to, 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 to take a look at. Yeah, there's I, I mean, there's a lot of I, I momentum be behind uh, KubeVirt. Kube. Yeah, Kube, Kube, yeah. KubeVirt. I yeah. got it right that first time. So, <laughs> but I, and I think what it for good reason because I, I think that everybody knows that. Uh, if you've ever administered VMs and, you know, having been on that side of the fence and looked at it and, and you, you start to look at it, sometimes there's bloat in those VMs anyways. And the workloads could fit very nicely into a container-based uh, deployment, right? I think that people are trying to figure out as they go smaller and towards the edge in particular, how do I balance that out? Uh, another place, it's interesting, you, you, you brought up uh, VMware by Broadcom or VMware from Broadcom. I always screw that up a little bit. Uh, I'm interested to see in another project where they play out as well this time around because it's Backstage. Yeah. And they had been contributing to Backstage. I, I have a feeling they'll be there contributing back into Backstage. Uh, and you guys contributed to Backstage. We had some of your folks on uh, that were on the committee or on the steering committee, or backstage uh, in Amsterdam. How how's that been progressing? Yeah, it, it, Rob, it's going great, and absolutely. Uh, Red Hat Developer Hub is our productization, and that's now generally available. So um, we'll have a strong presence, as we said, at the co-located events. Uh, you'll definitely have some people on the cube to talk about the progress that's been being made there, and that whole discussion about you know what do we have to do for the developers? How do we help? Uh, you know conquer some of that, uh, you know, the developers being overloaded, that cognitive overload uh, that they have and, you know, allow people to ramp up and get a little bit more consistency um, because that was kind of the, the greatest sin in the data center was every application got its own silo of excellence and we built everything bespoke. Um, cloud architectures were supposed to be a little bit more uh, repeatable in general purpose. And of course, we've seen the cloud itself is even more complex than the data center was. So 
platform engineering hopefully will get some consistency as to what, as an organization, what tools we use, what best practice we have, set those golden paths up. Um, and what we've been doing at Red Hat is helping to take Backstage and make it so that it's consumable for the enterprise. So um, it, 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 it's something that, you know, here's the tools. We have plugins. Uh, back at Amsterdam, we had a whole bunch of the ecosystem partners like JFrog and many others that were making their services available to the developers through that tool. So the hope is that this is going to be able to, you know, simplify things a little bit. But, you know, we're running real enterprise applications and, you know, unfortunately, spoiler alert, AI is not going to make anything simpler. Um, you know, maybe it'll help with some of the coding and a little bit of the overhead, but the overall infrastructure and managing that environment is complex and will continue to be something that these sorts of tools will be a huge help. Yeah, I think that's the understatement of the year that AI is not going to make things simpler. I, I think that it, it really, uh, it, yeah, I, I would be shocked if not every conversation had an AI bent to it at, at, uh, KubeCon this year because I, I think again and I, I've said it before I think it's definitely moving from being KubeCon to being Cloud Native Con, big letters versus and I because I think it really KubeCon's done its thing and I think they're they're I'm interested to see which which different uh, pieces actually mature come from Sandbox go from incubation into Sandbox and how they really move around because I think there's some we had talked about it. There's still some rationalization. And I think that, so you hit on it, the golden paths and the processes and the people and platform engineering coming together. And I know that there'll be a big push uh, from the CNCF as well on a lot of what they're doing around uh, how they're bringing more training. Because I think that was always a big thing is that uh, if you look back to the, to the, you know, years in the past where uh, VMworld, a lot of people would go to VMworld to get trained on things. And I think that the CNCF is trying to do that with these events as well. Yeah. Well, you know, the, 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 the quick thing, what have we been doing at Red Hat is how do we make this solution a, a full comprehensive application development platform? And it's a tough balance because we can help curate that big ecosystem but still give you the flexibility that if there's a tool that you want to be able to use that's not something that we have in their default, we, we allow that to come in. So that's something that, you know, we see as opposed to, you know, that overload and keeping up with the, oh, there's another new project, there's another new thing, and, you know, how many updates do I need to make every month and every quarter? Um, we want to shift that burden to us yeah. and something that we can do from a product standpoint and even manage services that we offer uh, with our partners and solutions that we have. Um, with both cloud providers and some of the data center hardware peers. Yeah, no, I with the cognitive the cognitive load on these platform engineers is 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 real. And in fact, I was talking to uh, one of the platform engineering teams uh, at a, a very large uh, financial uh, large pharma, and we were having this discussion. And their whole thing was <laughs> just keeping up with the roadmaps. Is like uh, they literally have somebody whose full-time job is figuring out and tracking all the roadmaps and where they should be. And because we haven't even really gotten into it, but security and open SSF is going to be there in a big way. And there's a lot of security things going on, but SBOMs are kind of maturing. People know that SBOMs aren't the end all be all of everything. And just keeping up with that cognitive load from a security and compliance perspective is just unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Rob, yeah, I, I am surprised we didn't talk about security because that is front and center, something that we all need to be looking at. Um, again, AI is going to add to that uh, equation also. So uh, absolutely something we'll be talking plenty about uh, at that show, even though it's interesting because uh, the CNCF pulled off. Uh, there's a cloud native security con, yeah. uh, which is happening. Uh, I believe it's in Silicon Valley yeah. uh, coming up in a couple of months. We'll have a presence there, too. I've got a couple of folks on my team that are heavily involved in that kind of activity. So um, security, absolutely front and center. It's almost uh, you know a given at this point that we're going to spend a lot of time and a significant chunk of budget uh, on that piece of the stack. Absolutely. And I, I think, again, it's one of these where platform engineering really is kind of big tent for bringing in FinOps, security, bringing in a lot of other pieces there. It's kind of the new IT, as I like to say. And, uh, you know, again, if you're looking to get your, uh, you know, where do you go from your path, 
it's not always, hey, I have to just be the cloud admin. It's like platform engineering and being multi-cloud and hybrid is probably the place to go. If I was, you know, counseling uh, people in IT these days, that's where I would say to focus. So last word, what what else, anything we missed? Any? Yeah, I, I think we covered a good swath of it. You know, absolutely. If you're, if you're going to the event, a uh, hallway track is something that you definitely recommend. Uh, the expo floor is big. Good news is you want to come see Red Hat. We're right when you're walking the door, I believe it's A1. Um, if you go just search online, like Red Hat KubeCon Paris, you know, 2024, uh, you'll find a page. Uh, we've got over 30 uh, speaking sessions. Uh, we've got, you know, p- people participating on the cube. We talked a bunch about the, the co-located events. So uh, it's a really busy event. Um, if you're there, please reach out to me. Uh, I'll be at our booth a bunch. I've got a bunch of meetings with some of our partners, some analysts uh, and the like, but always love to meet new people. And it is a really, really welcoming community. So don't be shy. If you have a question, reach out, uh, find ways that you can participate, because that's something we always need in this community is more people participating. And it's not just code. There's help in documentation. There's help in organization. Um, I've got a few people on my team that are heavily involved in community aspects uh, of what we're doing. So uh, check it out. Uh, stop by, say hi, and uh, yeah, tip, if you stop by early at the Red Hat booth when they're open, you might even be able to grab a fedora. Yes. I was going to say the fedoras go quickly. That That's, that's for sure. <laughs> well, thanks for coming on board and doing this preview because I, I think, again, getting your guys' insight from being in the trenches and all of these open source projects is always enlightening. Thanks so much, Rob. And thank you for watching this KubeCon and CloudNativeCon preview on theCUBE, the leader in high-tech enterprise analysis and coverage.